Hey, what's going on YouTube fam? There's a lot of amazing channels that have put together a video for you on how to start a homestead in 2022. Yes. And we have a playlist in our description. So yes. make sure you check it out. Check all the channels out and see which ones you like and, and give and subscribe to them. Yeah, and don't forget, uh, if you're new joining us, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and we thank you so much for joining us. Yes. So yeah, so the topic we're dealing with is how to build a homestead in 2022 so we wanted to go over things we would do differently if we moved right into this house right now that we have learned over the years. you don't know us but we have a house in a neighborhood we do have 10 acres but most of it is wooded so we're gonna show you how we homestead on a very small piece of land you can do so much yes. with it yes absolutely and so we were we were kind of talking over this what would we do differently and I think really the first thing we would do is raised beds. Probably wondering why would we do this first? Well, the nice thing is, is that you can put them kind of anywhere. You are almost guaranteed a very high success rate when you do raised beds because you can buy the soil from the store. You don't need much soil depending on how much, uh, how big the raised bed is or how much it is, right? Mm -hmm. So you're getting good quality soil, you're having a raised bed, and boom, you're starting your garden like immediately and you can direct seed in it or you can start your transplants, whatever you wanted to do. And so this is just a great option. And what this is, is this allows you to be able to start growing something immediately. Mm -hmm. So what we did when we first moved in was we started a, we, we hurried up, we started a garden, the soil was terrible, we didn't get any produce from it. We didn't know where the sun was, anything like that. So if you don't know your yard very well, if you don't have good soil, yes. start this way as you're getting your regular soil ready and together. Yeah. So we really recommend starting with the raised beds and then, you know, you don't need a lot. It just depends on your situation and what you want to do. And this fits for really any scenario, decks, or if you have a lot of land, this just gives you time. You can start growing. So then you can start working on, which would be the second option that we would do is working on your infrastructure, figuring out your water, right? Mm -hmm. Figuring out your, um, what does that mean? Figuring out your water? Like wondering where you're going to run your water lines like are, in five years are you going to be extending your pasture to a certain point and if you are are you going to have water over there how are you going to get water there are you going to run underline underground lines how are you going to get power if you want to run um uh, electric fencing that's not solar how are you going to get where are you going to store your feed where are you going to build your shelters all that's infrastructure yeah. so, so we're going to show you what we do and this is what we've come up with after many many trials and errors so one of the things we love to do is have our homestead make sense and so we have all the fruit in the front so we have the peach tree and then right here we have all of our blueberry bushes that go around our patio all the way there we have our raspberries in our raised bed here and we'll be planting other stuff uh, we did have strawberries but we moved those these are our apple trees yep and if you're wondering what this is uh, we have this lined up for our cow pasture one of them but well, we're going to uh, move to the next advice we could give right for building a homestead and that would be what do you think that is what would you think of this oh boy uh, uh, i don't know tell me chickens oh yeah yeah it's your first animal on your homestead it's so easy it should definitely be chicken <laughs> <laughs> now the reason uh, we we did raised beds first is because you're getting a really like a quick garden that you could start producing yeah. food. Yep. The reason why we're dealing with infrastructure is because you're you're now you have time to focus on f your future goals. Mm -hmm. But really, the next option is chickens, and that's because they require very little work, and you're getting eggs. Yeah. And see, so now you have two options you can quickly start getting food from. Yep. Chickens. All types of chickens. So you can get more chickens than you need so that you can sell the eggs and that'll take care of some of the costs on your homestead. Or you can just get just enough for your family. We have lots, not only because we like to share our eggs with family and friends, but because we have seven people living in our house, we have five kids. So uh, eggs is just a really easy, really easy thing to grow on your homestead. Over here, we have our meat chicken parent what's the rooster a rock white white rock 
And then the dark Cornish. They together make meat chickens. And they're, um, we're choosing chickens because, like we said, they're very easy to take care of. They require not a lot of feed. They don't require a lot of feed, and, and we're coming, you're getting eggs, which you can do a lot. You can use eggs for baking. You yeah. can use eggs if, for scrambled eggs, fried eggs. I mean, yeah. you can do a lot with it. If you subscribe to our channel, you will see our next video that comes out, and that's all about uh, cutting costs on feed. And so we're able to feed these chickens, all these chickens, $2 a month. Yeah, $2 a month. Yeah. Those are three options right there that we think that would be very good. Like if you were to start a homestead, if we were to start over this year, that's those are the three things we would do right away. Raise beds, infrastructure, chickens, right? Yep. Then if you're, um, if you're to a point to where you're ready, then I would really start focusing on this, a bigger garden. The reason why this would be fourth in our process is because it takes a while to build your soil, to get the soil right, to get your compost right. It would it ta take a while to really get that and it requires more time, more energy, and it, it can just, it can be a process, right? We've been working on these two gardens for two the two years now, right? Yeah. And we're still trying to improve the soil. So it just takes time, and if you're wanting to start something like now, that's why the raised beds are a, for, uh, a first choice. But you get all those done, and you're like, what's next? Gardens, getting a bigger yeah. garden, getting a bigger so, garden, learning to, to produce more food so you can start canning, right, and preserving. Yeah, if you don't have a lot of money just like us, so a lot of homesteaders that share their life now, they make a lot of money. And so there's all these things that you, you can't do yourselves. Well, we don't. And so this is where we showed our instant garden video. So if you don't have a lot of money for soil, make sure you check out the instant garden video so that you can put together a garden with soil that will grow things for you and your family. Yes. So then the next step I would probably take Mm -hmm. and our homestead. We got our raised beds. We got the plan out of our infrastructure and our future five goal, five year plan. We got our chickens. We're getting our eggs. We are, we expanded our garden. Everything is going well. What do we do next? What would be a next option? It's not goats. I wouldn't choose goats. It'd be pigs. Yes. Yes. Now I love goats. I agree. I, ha I, ha I love goats so much i think they are a blast they are a fun animal you get milk from them but they would be not be top four on my list or top five on my list who's that pretty thing walking in front of me hi you coming eli this is eli our our uh, biggest biggest boy so number five would be pigs. And the reason why we would say pigs is He's because, huge. yeah. <laughs> the reason why we would say pigs is because they're a multi-purpose animal. You can get them to start clearing out land if you have a lot of, if you have enough land to where you yeah. need stuff cleared out. But they were, they're literally, I'm not even kidding you, free to feed. Yeah. Free yes. to feed. Yes. Why? Food scraps. That's all you need off your table. And then um, we have, of course, a lot of kids, so we got a lot of food scraps. It feeds them, keeps them happy. I'm telling you, they are so amazing. And then you know you're not wasting can, any yes, food. And we can share with you in our next feed video of how to cut costs of how we get scraps from other things and places and people to where you can even expand your herd or whatever they're called of multiple pigs. Right. Your family of pigs. But uh, yeah. But look at this. So we're also but we're using them right now because we want to expand our pasture. We want to expand our pasture. But look how they look how they tore all this up. Look how they tore all this up. Look how he tore all this up. And then this is what it used to look like. So that's what it looked like before, after. Look at this. This is gonna be so nice when we're able to seed. If you've, if you've reached the pig level, right? Yep. You want to call it the pig level. Um, something and that- And you're looking for a dairy animal. Yeah, if you're looking for a dairy animal, what, what would be a good step for you? I would look at really, this is part of your infrastructure, your pasture, your land. Can your land, do you have enough land to handle a cow? Or do you have land that really could handle more goats? And you can get goat milk. Goat milk is good. You can do a lot with goat milk. If your land can handle a cow, get a cow. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, uh, that would be my opinion so too. So we were super scared to get a cow because they're really big animals. Uh, you can't just grab them and pick them up and move them. Right. 
Uh, so we were really nervous about it, but uh, Nathaniel cleared out this pasture and then we got cows and we're so glad we did and really we're, we love the goats, um, but you get a lot less milk. You can do a lot less with it. We do keep our goats because we're making soap and all those kinds of things out of it and that's just another step, step to being self-sufficient because you need soap and that kind of thing. But if you're looking for dairy for consumption and making cheese and butter and all of that, you're a uh, high pudding. You're gonna want a pudding in your life. Yeah. So yeah, so definitely, definitely if you have the land and you, and you are, I can, I'm gonna tell you this right now, you can do it. You can do it. You, if you have the land, do not be too scared. Do the yeah. research. You can own a cow. Okay. Yeah. We were just as scared. We were just as nervous. Literally my favorite animal on the property. And yeah. And so if you're scared, watch our, uh, meet our dairy cow pudding video to kind of learn more about her and just make sure you ask the right questions and, we, and we'll go over that in our, our meat, meat a cow video. But if you do not have the land, goats are a great option. They are, they are sweet, they are fun to watch, they are fun yes. to be around. You can get milk from them. And babies, you can sell You can get babies, babies which you can sell. And help you sustain. Offset your cost, right. yeah, all that, yep. Show Kim. Hi Cody. That's our, Caroline. <laughs> That's our second big boy. Goats are a great option. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we love our goats. They are so much fun <laughs> to be around. And the babies are just the cutest things and so much fun to watch them like hop around and jump and play. We do milk them. You do get milk, like we said. So they are a great option if you don't have the room for a cow. Uh, but it is a notch up above chickens and really a notch up above pigs. They require a little bit more work, but it is doable. You can do it. But if we were to do this again, I would get a cow over goats first, any day. Yes. Any day. Yes. Yeah, because also a cow is a lot easier to take care of, which sounds kind of crazy. Um, a, a goat is more temperamental with parasites. More sensitive, and yeah. Just more, yeah, yeah, more sensitive. More sensitive, yeah. And they just, they just really, honestly, goats require as much work or more work than a cow does. So, in the end. What's up, buddy? This is our number four baby. That's green. It gets noisy here with all the ants. They all try to compete on who's the loudest around here. The next thing we think that would be a good investment. This invest is huge. This is huge. Another thing that would be a good investment for a homestead would be a wood stove. Yeah. And yes, it's not an outdoor thing, but it is so crucial because it's free for heating your home. You can cook on it. It's really becoming more self-sufficient because you're not relying on the energy or if you lose power, you got, I mean, it's just amazing. Yeah. And like we lost power actually this year uh, due to a snowstorm and we were able to cook on it and we were staying warm when it was 15 degrees outside. I mean, it was just amazing. So a wood stove is a great investment. We have a wood shed here behind us where we, ch we hand chop our wood and stack it. It's just amazing. But also another thing to think about in your infrastructure process right, talking is- about making things make sense. Making things make sense. Make sure that when you build something, try to think of a multi-purpose idea of it. So you're getting more value out of your mm -hmm. space. That is so huge. And that's what we did here. This is a wood stove. I mean, not a wood stove, my bad. This is a woodshed, but we also built right into the woodshed our, our chicken brooder. Yep. We're gonna be able to, uh, any chickens that we are literally incubating and hatching at this moment, you, we'll put in here, mm -hmm. we can uh, brood them, we got the water, we got the feed, we got the heat lamp to keep them warm, they are safe, they are safe, and nothing's gonna get in because we got the, the netting and mesh all around. Yep. So be, be thinking of that, like you're like, oh, I wanna put a shed here. Well, well, what are you using the shed for? What are you going to use it for? Can you use it, multi-use it for yep. other items and stuff like that? I'm telling you, there's so much value in things that we just kind of take our time. And sometimes, from experience, we've rushed into things and we just did it. And then we look back and we go, man, we wish we would have just tweaked this, just this item, right? 
yep. and we could have gotten more value out of that. Mm -hmm. So just be mindful of that when you're doing the homestead. And that's really for anything, placing your gardens, any, all that stuff. Just think about what you're really doing in it. And one of the things I wish we would have done better when we first got here is made more pasture and focused on that. See, our, I guess we really couldn't have, but it would have been nice if we could have because our yard was woods. We had to take it all down. Right. And so we're still trying to grow regular grass. We haven't lived here that long. So we've done all of this from scratch. And um, having more pasture is going to help you on hay costs. Yes, yes. Yeah. That is the biggest cost right now is hay. Yeah, and if you want to uh, hear about how prices are going to be going up, check out our food shortage with the commercial farmer video. That's just a warning to homesteaders and farmers that to be stocking up on things like hay and grain, dog food, whatever. Um, yeah, and we're not about promoting fear. We're yeah. just about getting people prepped and uh, preparing people. Prepare now so you don't have to be scared later. I would say this would be probably the last item, right? Yeah. This is this would be the last item that you should get. Uh, and you can think about this in your infrastructure setup as well. But that would be a rain barrel. So right behind me is a rain barrel. This is a this is a 2100 gallon rain barrel. And of course, I have it hooked up to where we can put a a, ba a bucket underneath to fill it up with water. I'm going to be hooking up to run hoses off of it here soon. But a rain barrel is amazing because you're collecting water from the, the rain and then you're able to use it to fill the water for your animals or your gardens. And it is just, it is worth its weight in gold. So when you're thinking about these things, think about that. Like how can, when I build the shed, how can I collect rainwater off of it? Oh, when I'm building this, well, can I get rain off, can I get water off of that to fill the trough for my cows? So think about those things when you're building this. Well, how can I collect water and, and preserve it to use for my garden? In. And you know these are things that we wish we would have um, prepared a little better for that we are trying to teach you and help you when you start your homestead this year or even next year. Um. Oh, this is our third son Matthew. Yeah. This yeah, is our fifth here. baby, oh, which is here. Opal. Oh, she's eating my hair. Opal. <laughs> So we have four boys and one girl. We wanted to say thank you so much for joining us and yeah. watching us. Don't forget to check out the other channels that are collaborating yeah. with us. They're in the description below. You gotta check them out. They are great homesteaders, great people. They're gonna have great information. And it's really this collaboration is gonna be packed with uh, knowledge, information, lessons learned, so that when you go to start yours, you're gonna be better off than we are. Yeah. And that is what we hope for you. Yes. Well, thank you so much. We uh, just love you guys. Have a blessed day. And God bless. Bye. Yeah.